Hi, I'm John Leslie, and welcome to this walkthrough of Favreau. I'm going to start with this Dwight D. Eisenhower quote. Plans are worthless, but planning is everything. So this mindset is key for traditional project management, and it's absolutely essential to agile planning. And Favreau is all about not only agile planning, but collaborative agile planning. The process of planning and making that process collaborative within teams and across teams of teams, across the entire organization. If your organization is very command and control, then Favreau is probably not for you. However, if your organization is striving for business agility, especially if you're in a hybrid workplace with a lot of distributed work, then that's exactly what Favreau is designed for. Now let me show you how collaborative planning works in Favreau. Here we have a Kanban board where you can create your own process flow, the various stages that work needs to move through from start to finish, and pull those cards through to the various stages, like so. But of course, this is not what makes people excited about Favreau, because this is basically Trello, or Microsoft Planner, or one of the many hundreds of other tools that do exactly the same thing. So let me show you the first thing that usually does get people excited about Favreau. And that's the ability to have multiple boards within the same single screen view or collection as it's called in Favreau. Here we have a product development team flow. And on the same single screen collection, we have a DevOps team Kanban or a DevOps team flow. So we're looking at two value flows, two process flows in the same single screen collection. We've instantly created transparency across teams of teams just by simply having the ability to have multiple flows in a single screen collection. Now there's also the ability in Favreau to have the same cards in multiple places. So say this development team has reached the QA review stage of this login and verification feature. So they could simply take this down to drag and drop this down to this DevOps team's Kanban flow, where they can then maybe start automated testing. And this same card now exists in multiple value flows. It's here in the DevOps team Kanban. And it's also here at the QA review stage on this development team's Kanban. And we can see, thanks to relations, exactly what stage this exists in in each other team's board. For example, I can see here that DevOps currently has this in the automated testing stage. Whereas from the DevOps side, I can see that this is currently in QA review on the product development team's board. So instead of creating separate tickets, we're bringing teams together to collaborate on the same pieces of value. This card that exists on these two boards is the same card, the same feature, the same increment of value. Each team has its own flow and a series of steps to completion but it's the same thing that multiple teams need to collaborate on to deliver it to the ultimate end customer. It's bringing teams together rather than pulling them apart and creating silos, which can easily happen in other tools when it can become ticket system overload. But you might have different preferences for how to visualize planning and collaboration. Maybe one team wants to see their workflow as a Kanban, but the other team may want to see it as a list. So here, for example, this DevOps team may be looking at things as a Kanban, and this product development team might simply want to see the same work, these same cards, in a list view or a sheets view. And they can quickly toggle the same board, those same cards, to look like this and track progress in this way. In this view, they might also want to add some hierarchy. So they could maybe break this down into these are features. And maybe here we have our bugs. And creating that hierarchy is as simple as selecting and indenting, like so. And now that we've clearly separated the features from the bugs. Or you may choose to look at things in a timeline or roadmap view, like so, where you can drag and drop these same cards on a timeline changing their dates, start and end dates, 
reorganizing them any way you choose. There's also intelligence built into the boards. This team may choose to track progress in a very visual way, maybe via a burndown chart like this, or maybe a cumulative flow diagram like this, or even a control chart like this. It's even possible to create very specific views based on filters and show settings. So maybe for example, I want a view of the same board specific to me. So I'll create it as a Kanban and I'll call it John's view. And I will filter this hitting the F key is the hot key for filtering. And I'm going to filter it down just to cards assigned to me. And maybe I also don't want to see time on board and time in column, but I do want to see estimation on the cards. I can save this to John's view. And now I have another view to toggle back and forth to. I can even set this as my default view if I choose to. Some teams might be more advanced and they want a full product backlog. And you can see this product backlog over here on the left pane in the Favreau interface. This can be a full hierarchical backlog. You can see I've broken this down into maybe the different apps and the different epics, maybe broken down into features or user stories. And you can add whatever custom fields you want, priority, estimation, the relations field, attachments field, so on and so forth. where the teams could take a particular feature, say the Zapier integration, and commit it by dragging and dropping from the backlog to their board. Now again, this card exists in two places. It's both here in this backlog and here on this product development team's board. And thanks to relations, it's going to show us exactly what board it's on and what stage it's at in that board. like so. Now there might be multiple teams working on this same feature of this same piece of value. In that case, I'd simply drag the same card again, not creating a separate ticket or a separate card. It's the same card now in three different places. It's on the product development teams board, and it's also on this DevOps teams board where both of those flows could even be tracked separately directly from the backlog. As you can see here, in this relations field in the backlog. Now let's talk about collections. If I open up Favreau's navigation panel over here on the left, these are what are called collections. And collections can be used for three things essentially. Maybe a collection for a different team, like this development team collection we're currently in, different situations such as a dashboard collection aggregating teams of teams, which I'll show you in a moment, and also maybe a workspace to collaborate with externals, which I'll also be getting to. Now let's see how we can use collections to collaborate across teams. We've already seen this development team collection, and of course DevOps could have its own collection. I'm going to switch now to a dashboard collection for this leadership team. Here we have the difference between a traditional business organization and more of an organic or agile business organization. As you've already seen, Favreau adapts to different styles of planning. Each one of these teams indicated by these circles in the agile business organization or organic business organization can work however they see fit in the app. And it's important to be able to empower collaborative planning between teams of teams and also collaborative planning with management. So the planning can happen both horizontally across teams of teams and vertically across different levels of the organization. Okay, so back to this leadership dashboard. Since this is a dashboard collection and we are at the leadership level, I have two backlogs that were actually created within this collection. They live primarily in this collection. And I also have a portfolio Kanban and roadmap over here on the right. But since this is a dashboard collection, I have the ability 
to have the boards in multiple collections at the same time, just as you can have the cards in multiple places at the same time. So what that allows me to do, for example, is I can click this plus, say add from another collection, and bring in that product development team's product backlog. This is the same product backlog that exists in that development team collection. It's live, so as things move, as things change, I'm able to track that here at the leadership level, including the relations, where I'm able to track directly from the backlog, from this leadership dashboard, the status, the progress of each and every one of the, in this case, features, pieces of value, what team's working on it, and what stage it's at across all of those teams. Just as I've added the product backlog for that team, I could also add maybe a marketing Kanban or a marketing sprint board where I can see directly here from this leadership collection what marketing's working on in real time. Now back to our portfolio backlog full of business initiatives. So here you can see strategic initiatives, business epics, everything that's driving this business forward. Now, just as the development team would commit things from their product backlog to their Kanban board, the leadership team can do the same thing. Maybe this agile transformation initiative, they could commit this just by dragging and dropping from the portfolio backlog to this portfolio Kanban, moving it through the various stages like so. Now this card exists, of course, both here on this Kanban board and again back here in the backlog. So also in this leadership collection, we have a recruitment backlog. This is full of all of the recruitments necessary for the company to move forward, all of the open racks, all the open positions. Say this chief growth officer, we're ready to start looking, start recruiting this particular position. So you could take this CGO card, drag it from this recruitment backlog again onto this portfolio Kanban. It moves from selected, do the analysis, do we have the budget for this? How much are we willing to pay for this particular position? So on and so forth. Once it passes that stage, goes on into implement, means we're actually ready to start recruiting the CGO position. Now the people working on this will probably be HR or a talent team. So let's look at a talent team collection, which could look maybe something like this. So just as we added that product backlog to the leadership team's dashboard collection, here we're going to pull in that recruitment backlog from the leadership team's dashboard collection. So we're gonna go kind of the other way. Add from collection, recruitment backlog, and now here we have that same recruitment backlog. So the leadership team can actually be driving recruitments and when things are ready to start from their leadership level, from their leadership level dashboard collection. So the talent team is going to see automatically because it's the same backlog that this CGO position, chief growth officer, this recruitment is ready to start. So just as you see how they've done here for this recruit to software engineers, they can create their own flow. So what they can do is they can say, okay, chief growth officer, let's click this card, maybe put some more details of the hiring requirements, what the job posting looks like, so on and so forth directly on the card. They can click the card menu and go to break down to board and they can create their very own recruitment flow, maybe specific to this position. Maybe it's a more important position in the company. So they're going to have maybe a different recruitment flow from the software engineering recruitment, for example, or it could be the same or close to the same. something like this. Now, maybe this particular hire is so important we're working with a headhunter or an executive search company, recruitment agency. So here, this is an example of working with externals. So we'll jump over to this recruitment agency collection. Um, they were also working on this recruit to software engineers. 
and we're going to add again from the talent collection we're going to add the chief growth officer kanban flow for that particular recruitment now this recruitment agency which is actually populated with external members this is a mix of both external members and internal members as you can see here they're going to work to fulfill this CGO, this chief growth officer position. They'll be adding cards with the person's name, maybe copying and pasting in that person's LinkedIn profile picture, uh, a link to their LinkedIn, paste, posting their resume on this card, so on and so forth. And that's going to go through the flow that was defined by the talent team. So here you see a good example of using Favreau to collaborate with an external partner. In this case, of course, a recruitment agency to make them feel more like an extension of your team rather than an outsourcer or an external. Now, this also gives me a chance to show a recent, very cool release in Favreau, which is called Automations. So if I go back to my talent team, And we're going to look at this one I've already populated, the two software engineer recruitment combine. So we'll take Scott Farmer. We'll say his resume looks good. And we want to actually schedule the interview with him or the first interview with him. So we'll drag into schedule interviews and you can see it automatically assigned the person responsible for scheduling those interviews. So this was all done with an automation at this particular stage. We can see that when something moves from selected resumes to scheduled interviews, we're automatically going to assign, in this case, Camilla. Now, another automation that's built into this board, automations are specific to each board. So once maybe Scott passes the background check, an offer is made, he accepts that offer and is hired, you can see here that it automatically added this same card to an onboarding Kanban flow and it put it in the very first stage or column ready for onboarding, which can look like this. So here he is, and now he can move through the actual onboarding flow since he's been hired. Equipment and logins ready, paperwork, orientation, so on and so forth. And again, thanks to relations, we can see from a recruitment standpoint, he was hired. And up here on this recruitment Kanban, we can see again, thanks to relations, that he's currently at the orientation stage of his onboarding process. And again, that was all done via that new feature release automations. Now you've seen a few examples and this is really it. If you're able to do these things that I've shown you, then you've learned the basic building blocks of Favro. You can use these same building blocks to really do anything. But of course, the opportunities in terms of practices and use cases to master with the help of Favro, of course, are endless. To support you as you become more advanced with the app, we have what's called Favro Academy with videos, articles. There's even a link here in the app to the help center where you can search for any topic, any feature that you need more help with, say automations, which I just showed you. And there you have different automations for different types of teams at your disposal with just a couple of clicks, including videos built into these articles. So again, Favro is easy to learn, but there's endless practices and potential uses to master. Just to reiterate, the very core of Favro is all about making the process of planning collaborative, both within teams, and across and between teams of teams. Thanks for your time, and I wish you great success with Favreau.